Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to study about inflorescence. Now see, before we start with the inflorescence, let me tell you about flower. See, this is the stem and this is the node area. The flower is always born in the axle of leaf that is known as bract. So this is a bract and in the axle of which flower will, will be born. So this is the flower. And we are supposed seeing from here. Let us assume this is our eyes and we are seeing from here. This is the viewer's eyes, the person eyes who is seeing it. So if you see according to him, this is anterior. Okay, this is anterior side for him. And opposite will be posterior. So this is posterior side. So according to him, bract is anterior, please focus. Bract is anterior and the mother axis is posterior. Okay. The mother axis is posterior side and bract is on the anterior side and flower is born in the axil of a leaf. Now see one thing. This is your axis, inflorescence axis. Continuously, it is going to be a flower. So this is not a, uh, you can say, main stem, it is an inflorescence axis, which is going to be a flower in its, uh, at the node area in the region of the bract. So in the axil of the bract, you will find the flower is born here. This is the way how flower is born. So this is your inflorescence axis. Means you can say stalk of the inflorescence. So this is talk of the inflorescence is known as peduncle. So peduncle is stalk of inflorescence. And this is the pedicel. Pedicel is the stalk of the petiole, sorry, leaf, flower. So pedicel is the stalk of the flower. And here you just remember, petiole was the stalk of the leaf. This is just for your remembering, so that you can remember which option when they ask you, where you have to use word petiole, where you have to use word pedicel, and where is peduncle. So today our focus will be on inflorescence. Now see, there are two basic type of inflorescence. First is your racemos, racemos in which the peduncle will continue grow, okay? So peduncle is showing indefinite growth. And as a result, because of indefinite growth, you will find flowers are showing some arrangement. And flowers will be either in acropetal manner or in the centripetal manner. Acropetal manner means young is present at the apex. You will find young flower at the apex and centripetal means young flower is in the center. Is it clear? So they are flowers are arranged either in acropetal manner or centripetal manner. So I'm just writing in short, apex has young flower. So apex is having youngest flower and here center is having youngest flower. So racemos inflorescence is a, nothing in which the peduncle will continue to grow. Another one is cymos. Cymos is the one in which peduncle will show definite growth. So definite growth means it will terminate by forming flower. Definite growth. That is, it terminates by forming flower. And then as a result, flowers are arranged in. Flowers will be present either in bicipital or centrifugal manner. So now you have understood basic petal means youngest will be at the base 
or centrifugal means youngest will be at the periphery. Clear? Now let us study type of racemos. Now see, this is your main axis. And when I'm drawing the bract, it means this was node area. So I'm drawing the bract. You can assume these are the nodal areas. And now flower. So this is your first flower, second flower, third flower, and this is your fourth flower. Clear? Now see another type of inflorescence. Types of racemes only we are discussing right now. See the board. Again, bract. And now see, this is the first flower. This is second flower, third flower, and this is the fourth flower. Difference in the first diagram and second diagram is in the first diagram, pedicels were having their own length. Pedicel means the stalk of the flower. But in the second diagram, lower flowers are having long pedicel as compared to the upper flower. Is it clear? Now see third one. Here the it is condensed. Means internodes areas are not seen, only nodal area will be seen. So this is your first bract, second bract, third bract, fourth bract, fifth and sixth bract. So this is your first flower, second flower, third flower, fourth flower, fifth flower and this is your sixth flower. Understood? Up till here, I hope you are able to understand. So this is your typical racine. This is racine inflorescence. This is corum. Where lower flowers have elongated their pedicel. This is umbel inflorescence where all are appearing to be coming from the one point. As a result, this green color means bract. Check my diagram carefully. These bracts have made one whirl. They have only made one whirl means ring. So this is a bract of the whirl, which is known as involucre. So involucre means it is a whirl of the bract. So it is a whirl of bract. Is it clear? Now see again one more diagram. Check carefully. This is bract. And now the flowers will be born without pedicel means sessile flower. First flower, second, third, fourth, and fifth. We have to draw on the topmost, the smallest flower, because we know in the racemos it is a acropetal succession is going on. Is it clear? Now see next one. In this, check my how I'm making the white. It is I'm making from upside down, means hanging. It is hanging, okay? So this is your first flower, second flower, third flower, fourth flower, and this is fifth flower. Now see here, this is known as spike. And this is known as catkin. Hanging one is known as catkin, clear? Now I'm writing the, with respect to whether the flowers are unisexual or bisexual. This will be again easy. Remember all the first diagram, they are having bisexual flower. All the first three diagrams, bisexual flower with pedicillate condition. Spike is also bisexual, but with sessile flower. Means pedicel is not there. And catkin is only unisexual. Okay, it is unisexual and especially it is a female flower. Generally, it will be a female flower. I hope this much you have learned. Now let me give you the examples also. 
So see here, your example will be radish and mustard. For quorum, your example will be capsella. For umbel example is your centella. For your spike, spike example is acranthus. And for catkin, which is also known as amentum, here the example is your mulberry, your bhojpatra, and oak. Clear? Now, let me just write another name because when it comes in the option, then you should know that catkin is also known as amentum. Catkin is also known as amentum. Clear? Now, in this, all these cases, if you see the peduncle was unbranched. Peduncle was unbranched. Now see, I'll make the peduncle branched. This is peduncle and this is the branch. White color I'm using for the branch. Clear? And now bracket. First flower, second flower, third flower. First, second, third. First and second. So this is your peduncle is going for branching and it is of raceme. So we will see this is known as compound raceme or also known as panicle. Either you say compound raceme or either you say panicle. Compound raceme, Res compound means it is gone for branching. Okay, better. It is also known as panicle. Now examples. Here, if you see the examples of this, I'm writing it here. Its example is your gulmohar and name. Gulmohar and name. Same way, suppose the quorum for the quorum, let us assume this is for quorum. This is going for branch. For explanation, we will take only three branches, okay? So that the diagram becomes very easy, otherwise it will be a confusion for us also for diagram. So if you have to practice, take only three branches and on the branches, you try to draw only two, three breaths. Now see here, this is the first flower second flower and this is your third flower. Try to come in the same level. First flower, second flower and third flower. First and second. So this is your compound quorum. This is your compound quorum. An example of compound quorum is in your house what we eat is cauliflower. Its example is cauliflower. Same way, compound umbel. I think so now you have understood, I can write directly example, compound umbel. It is example is your coriander and your uh, cumin. So I'm just writing it here this way. Compound umbel. Example is your coriander, main example is coriander. And same way, there is compound spike also. So compound spike is also known as a spikelet. Compound spike is also known as spikelet. And its example is generally coming from grass family. And its example come from grass family. So I think so up till here, I've explained you all the racimos 
which are branched as well as unbranched, but catkin is not having any branched. This is the only one which is without branch. Okay, this is, please remember, for racine, there is panicle, for corum, there is compound corum, for umbel, there is compound umbel, but for, and for spike also, there is compound spike, but for catkin, there is no compound. It is the one which is un, unbranched peduncle. Is it clear? Now, still few more are left for the racemos. I have to now discuss more. Next type of the racemos. See here, this is your peduncle is becoming a little bit thick. Try to understand this diagram, okay? And now here you are bearing the male flower. It is having male flower here and here female flower. And in between you will find it is a sterile flower. And this entire structure is covered by one bract. One bract will cover it. And this is colorful bract. Okay, this is a colorful bract which is covering this structure. So this bract is known as spathe. This bract is known as spathe and this inflorescence is known as spadix inflorescence. This is known as a spadix inflorescence and the example from here is your colocasia. Colocasia you will find here you will find in the banana also. Okay. And you will find in the maize also. Now another condition. See here. The peduncle has become the flat now. Peduncle has become flat. And the flat peduncle is known as receptacle. So this flat peduncle is known as receptacle. Okay, and now it will bear the flower. Check the diagram, it will bear the flower, two types of flower. This is your ray floret. This is your ray floret. And in the center, means it will be entire at the periphery. Okay, and in the center you are finding, this time drawing a diagrammatically difference. This is your disc floret. This is your disc floret. And this type of inflorescence is known as head. It is also known as racemos head. It is also known as capitulum. And it is also known as anthodium. These are the other names of this type of inflorescence. And such conditions is seen in sunflower. This is seen in sunflower, which is member of the advanced family of dicot. That family is known as Asteraceae. It is known as Asteraceae, which is an advanced family of dicot, which is also known as Compositae. Okay, so these are the examples of the racemos type of inflorescence. Now, one more thing I just want to highlight here. They will ask a ray florets or disc florets, what are they? They are unisexual or bisexual. See here, one learning tips is there. B, A, D, bed. So disc floret, disc floret, they are bisexual. So it means ray florets are unisexual. Is it clear? It means ray florets are unisexual. And they are actinomorphic. Actinomorphic means flower can be cut into two equal half in any plane passing through the center. If you remember in the animal kingdom, you have studied what radial symmetry. So actinomorphic is nothing radial symmetry. We represent in the diagram this way. So one you learn, second you can make it. It means ray floret is unisexual and it is zygomorphic. So these are your racemos type of inflorescence. So now see, this is your combined, com, uh, complete mind map for the racemos type of inflorescence. Is it clear? So basically, if you see the categories, one is your raceme, second is your corum, third is your umbel, fourth is a spike, Fifth is catkin, 
sixth is sparex and seventh is head or capitulum and these one these one these all are your branched conditions in which the peduncle is going for branching is it clear so racemous type of inflorescence is clear now let us start with the cymos now see here types of cymos and here you have to see with patiently please try to understand the diagram carefully this is the one which has terminated into the flower okay now see here this is the bract which is coming and new branches coming which is going again to terminate into flower again bract is coming and again new branches coming which is again terminating into flower again branch again bract and again now it is going to terminate into flower i'm using different color so that at least it becomes easy for you to understand when i'll explain you how the sympodial axis will be made okay again bract and again one more flower so this is terminated into flower this way okay so this is your first flower second flower third flower fourth flower and fifth flower understood the diagram up till here just wait one minute now see another condition check the diagram this is the first flower bract and this is your second flower again bract now see i am drawing making the bract on the alternate side okay earlier in the first diagram it's every time branching was coming only from one side now it is from alternate side this is your third flower again we have to draw the bract okay this is the bract green color and now we have to draw the fourth flower fourth one again bract and this is the fifth flower so this is the way how they are going for branching right now if you see in this diagram only one branch is coming at a time so this is your uniparous uniparous means only one branch is coming at a time and the second diagram is also uniparous now imagine i am holding the fifth flower in my hand and i am trying to make it straight if i am holding the fifth flower in my hand just imagine this is hanging down and down going this way making a curl like and i'm holding it and i'm making it straight then see the changes the first flower will go on the side now see the second flower second flower will also come this side okay this is second flower this was first flower this is second and check the bract will go this side then see the third flower third flower will come here bract this side and now see the fourth flower this is fourth flower and the bract will come this side okay this should be green color sorry then fifth flower this is fifth flower which is in my hand i have hold it right now so as a result if you see this main stem stopped white color is only main stem but this one check this diagram carefully i'm using this blue color check this blue color carefully this one which is nothing it is a fusion of the axis this is the one which is the fusion of the axis which is fusion of the axis your blue color yellow color red color and orange this is known as sympodial axis sympodial axis it is not main branch main branch main axis main axis has stopped only it is the white color which is main axis remaining appearing to be the main axis but they are nothing they are the fusion of the branches sympodial axis means fusion of branches 
Is it clear? Now see the diagram with this side also. Check carefully what we will do for here. Here also we'll hold the fifth in our hand. So this is your first flower. And this side is the bract. Then see the second one. You have to now focus carefully. In the second one, flower will go this side and bract will come this side. Third one. So one side flower, one side bract will give you idea that it is going for zigzag manner. Okay. It is going, it was going for zigzag manner. And this is the fifth holding in the hand. So this is your first flower, your second flower, your third flower, fourth flower, and this is fifth. If you see in the first diagram, uniparous, where all the bread on the one side and the flower on one side, this is your helicoid. And where in uniparous, where one side flower, one bread, one flower, one bread, alternating, this is known as a scorpioid. Is it clear? The uniparous is again of two types. It is helicoid or it is scorpioid. Now see, check the next diagram. This is your main one, which is terminating into flower. And now two branches will come. They will also terminate into flower. Now from this, two branches are coming. They are also terminating into flower. Again, two branches are coming. They are terminating into flower. So this is your first flower. This is second flower and this is your third flower. So every time two branches are coming, this is known as biparous. This is biparous. And now check the diagram. Terminating into flower and now see carefully, not two branches, one, two, three, four branches can come and they are also terminating into flower. Now again, four branches can come means more than two. So this way, if it is coming, then we will see now it is multi -parous. This is multi parous condition. Another language for this is you have to say this is your monocasial. Uniparous is also known as monocasial kind. Is it clear? It is also known as monocasial. So, see, this is also known as monocasial kind, uniparous. Biparous is known as dicasial chyme and multiparous is known as polycasial chyme. Now let me give you the example. Uniparous helicoid example is your solenum. I'm writing it here, you can check it. It is example is solenum. For scorpioid example is begonia. For biparous example is Bougainvillea. And Jasmine. Okay, and for multiparous example is Calotropis. So these are the two main types of the inflorescence, racemos and cymos, which is I hope now topic is clear to you. Now special type of inflorescence are there. Let me explain you that also. Special type of inflorescence See here, I'm making one cup-like structure. And this cup, I'm drawing it with the white color. So it gives you an idea. Obviously, it is means receptacle is making a cup-like structure. But if suppose I'm using this green color and I'm making the cup and you know very well, green always I was using for bread. So here, cup-like structure is made by the bread. So first of all, you have to remember the diagram very carefully. He, there are two special inflorescence will be there having the cup, but one cup is made by the whorl of the bread. 
and this is made by the peduncle means it is now becoming as receptacle receptacle is making cup now inside this you will find here male flower will be present and here gall flower gall flower are the sterile female flower they are sterile female flower and here fertile female flowers are present but here if you see in the center you will find one female flower this is a symbol for female flower which is surrounded by many male flower it is surrounded by many male flower so this is inflorescence is first or inflorescence is known as hypanthodium inflorescence hypanthodium inflorescence and this is known as cynthium inflorescence this inflorescence is also known as single flower like inflorescence single flower like inflorescence because it gives an appearance as if it is a one flower so single flower like inflorescence is it clear now see another type of inflorescence for this tulsi plant you have to remember to so imagine this is the tulsi plant stem which is very thin you know very well in reality and here these are the node area and you will find the flowers i'm drawing the flowers see here i'll draw the first flower second flower third flower fourth and fifth and sixth they are very small flowers they are okay and you will not be able to see properly also because the flowers are sessile or subsessile flowers and they are making a false whorl that is why the name is given as what is cluster inflorescence now let me explain you let us assume this nodal part we are making it big and now we will study in detail so see this is your nodal part which has become big now it is going to give rise to two branches which are terminating into flower so two branches are terminating into flower is it clear up till your two branches coming and terminating into flower means this is your type of your cymose inflorescence is it clear cymose inflorescence so after this now it is biparous now it will switch to monoparous means it is uniparous now after biparous it will switch to uniparous means monocacial so now see here this branch is coming only one will come so this was your first flower and now this is your second flower now it is switching to uniparous that also scorpioid scorpioid means now this side it will come this is your third flower is it clear this is your third flower red color is your third flower now it is stop so after giving this much it is stop so basically what it is it is first biparous one time it becomes it's a biparous and it switch to and then it gives two times two times uniparous that also scorpioid uniparous scorpioid and this type of inflorescence is seen in tulsi plant which is also known as verticillaster is it clear example of your hypanthodium inflorescence is your ficus species ficus bengalensis your ficus religiosa these are the examples for here your example is your euphorbiac family cynthium example is shown by euphorbiac family and verticillaster example is shown by labiate family labiate family okay example from this family is your salvia your mustard sorry tulsi plant tulsi plant is also known as oxymum this is a biological name of tulsi plant so i hope in today video all the types of the inflorescence topic is clear to you thanks for watching